Welcome to TRBC Sunset online service. Before we start our worship today, I ask all worshippers to be mentally, spiritually prepared. Put aside anything, including your handphone, that will distract you from worshipping. Sit upright in the proper positions for the worship. Thank you. The Lord's reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Psalm 99 verse 1. Let's join our heart and mind in the worship. Praise you with all 
Good evening, brothers and sisters. Have you ever waited at the prison gate for a friend who has just been released from the prison? What do you think he will be wearing to leave the prison? Will he be wearing this classic jailbird jumpsuit with horizontal stripes? Of course not. He will choose to wear his own clothes, no matter how eager he is to go home. Why? because he doesn't want to be reminded of his jail sentence. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, the apostle says that we are to get rid of the futile thoughts and corrupted behaviors of the past, replace them with new set of thoughts and behavior, have a renewed mind. Only then we can live a life worthy of our calling. Paul used the phrase, put off your old self. Why? Because the old self is bad, dirty and inappropriate. We cannot keep such old self. We are to take off our old self and put on a new one. Last year, I renovated my house. I have two options to lay the tiles. One is to hack off all the old tiles before laying the new ones. This process is very noisy and dirty. Option two is simply to lay the new tiles over the old ones. This process is much faster and is also cheaper. But the catch will be years later, the new tiles might peel off from the wall or pop out from the floor. Therefore, I decided not to go for shortcut. I took option two. Likewise, our old thoughts and bad behavior must be completely hacked off. During our CG, we are to cover Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to chapter 5, verses 21. However, for today's sermon, I have scoped it down to chapter 5, verses 15 to 21. And my focus for today is life of a new self. Let's read the scripture together. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, songs, from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Paul exhorts us with this pointer on how to live up our new self. 1. Careful living, cherish time, clear purpose. Be spirit-filled, praise and thank God, submit to one another. Let's look at each of them. Careful living. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Being careful means being on a lookout, as if you walk through a dangerous place, keeping close attention to what to the surrounding environment. Someone, verse 1, give us a specific guideline on how we should walk. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinner takes. We need to be careful not just in big matters but also in small matters. Being careless opens us, opens a crack for the devil to accuse us or give people an opportunity to frame or attack us. It is said that renowned evangelist B. Billy Graham, before he entered a hotel room, he would ask his accompanying pastors to enter the room to check that there is no one hiding inside. Then he would enter the room and lock the door. This is being careful. Now that we live a new self, we cannot live carelessly. Being careless will make a fool of us. 
Paul wants us to be wise men instead, not a fool. But how does a wise man look like? By default, we use the world standard to, to measure wisdom, but the Bible has an, another interpretation for wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understand, understanding. Here it says, wise man fears the Lord. Jesus says, whoever hears this word of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So wise man practice what he learned. So a wise man need not be knowledgeable or eloquent. It simply means he obeys the Lord, being reasonable and considerate. Now the opposite of wisdom is foolishness. Foolishness does not mean having no academic qualifications. It can also it actually can refer to someone who is very stubborn, must win all the time and only pursue what benefits their self-interest. On careful living, Apostle Paul mentioned two areas that we have to take note of. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. In its original meaning, making the most of every opportunity means to redeem, to rescue from loss. What is redeem? Let me use an illustration of a pawn shop. In the 70s, people were quite poor. So whenever they need quick money, they will take something valuable from home and go to the pawn shop in exchange for the money. And later, when they have save up enough money, they bring the money back to exchange back the, their valuable things. This is called redeem. Now, but why do we say redeem the time? Isn't the time belongs to us? Yes, the time belongs to us. But Paul says the, time, the days are evil. There are so many temptations, distractions that we unintentionally pawn our time away. So we lost this time because we one enjoyment, temporal enjoyment that has no eternal values. So Paul is telling us that we have to imagine that the time that originally belongs to us is actually being pawned away. So we have to redeem it back. On careful living, Apostle Paul mentioned two areas that we have to take note of. One, cherish time. Making the most of every opportunity because of the days are evil. Verse 16. In the original text, it has a meaning of redeem or to rescue from loss. What is redeem? Is let me use an illustration of a pawn shop. In the 60s, 70s, many Singaporeans were poor. So whenever they need quick money, they took something valuable from home and go to the pawn shop. To exchange for some money. In six months or a year later, when they have saved up enough money, they will go back to the shop and exchange back their valuable things. That is called redeem. Now why should we redeem the time? Isn't the time belongs to us? Yes, the time belongs to us, but Apostle says that the days are evil, full of temptation and distraction, so much so that we have pawned away our time and unintentionally or unknowingly. What did we do to, with the time? We watch serial dramas, we look at social media, handphone, internet. Paul was saying that we have to give up all this thing that has no internal values in order to redeem the time, no matter how enjoyable and satisfying they are. Since the circuit breakers, there were a lot of social media coming in every day. I look at my handphone, there are so many informations, stories, health tips, exercises, games, quotations. As I look at each of them, I find found that it actually wasted a lot of my time. Therefore, by middle of April, I decided not to look at, open up all these video clips at all. Because if I look at each of them, I would have easily spent one or two hours a day. And I do not know which is beneficial and which is not. Therefore, I decided not to look at it at all. 
we are in this unprecedented time of having to wear a mask whenever we step out of the house. Recently, as usual, I went to the bakery shop to buy some bread. And the sales lady was saying that, oh, looks like the end of the world is coming. And I quickly said, yes, you are right. The end of the world is coming. But there's something that you need to know, which is more important, is what happened after the end of the world. But I did not continue further because I'm not supposed to talk too much. I need to buy and quickly go home. And to wear a mask to share the gospel isn't very pleasant. And at that moment, I felt a tint of guilt. Why didn't I seize the opportunity all this while before the circuit breaker started to share the gospel with her? Brothers and sisters, let us remind ourselves to make good use of these 24 hours given to us to redeem the time that has been lost to things that has no eternal values. Let invest more in life rather than invest in making money or entertainment that have no eternal values at all. I'm not saying that we cannot spend time on entertainment, but I'm saying that we need to apportion our time to make sure that we live a balanced life. Next, having a clear purpose. Verse 17, Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I'm sure you know of this phrase, begin with an end in mind. When we undertake a task, we want to know the purpose and also the expected outcome. Similarly, a wise man would ask God, what does he want of me and from him? Many people will ask this question, how do I understand the will of God? Especially those who are looking for a job, those who are courting. They want to know who is my ideal partner and which job is my ideal job. They appears to know, appears to seek God's will, but in actual fact, they are more concerned with their personal agendas. Very few people will ask, what is God's will for me in his kingdom and in his church? Actually, God's will is quite clear, quite clearly stated in the Bible. Let's look at Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God's prepared in advance for us to do. So God wants us to do good work. And now is a time for you. We have to seize the opportunity to go do good work now. The current pandemic has caused disrupted many people's lives. Many NGOs have chipped in to help the needy. So please consider supporting this organization financially if you can. And many Christian organizations are also facing financial problems. So you may consider supporting them if you are financially able. Even if you don't have money, you can do the least is to go to the black bank to give your blood. Today, many Christians fail to take God's will seriously. God's will is that we remain in fellowship with one another. But some believers would rather exclude themselves from the community and they just want to be on their own. Now, we are aware of God's will, yet we refuse to follow accordingly. Brothers and sisters, are we being wise or being unwise? To live a life of a new self, Apostle wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In verses 18 and 19, he says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. What does it mean by be filled with the Holy Spirit? He's speaking in tongues, Exorcism, healing the sick, holy laughter, the indicators of feeling, being filled with the Holy Spirit. No, these are not what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, it states two situations in which a person can be filled with the Holy Spirit. The first situation is when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit to complete a specific task. For example, Exodus 31 3, the Spirit of God filled Bazali gave him wisdom and power to make all kinds of handicraft and tools needed for the tabernacle. 
In Acts 4, 8, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit as his body proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ to the elders, rulers, and teachers of the law. So they are being filled with the Holy Spirit to accomplish a certain task and it has a specific outcome. The second situation on being filled with the Holy Spirit is to describe a person's spiritual life. For example, Acts 6 5 describes Stephen as a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Acts 11 24 describes Barnabas as a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith. So they did not receive the Holy Spirit suddenly to, re to accomplish a certain task. Instead, it describes their state of spirituality. It is a continual process. The filling of the Holy Spirit mentioned by Paul here belongs to the second kind. In other words, the continuous infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we see this from Paul's use of the present tense, be filled. And be filled means to have our minds and thought completely influenced and guided by the Holy Spirit. It is something similar to drunkenness. That's why Paul uses this to contrast with being filled with the Holy Spirit. Drunkenness is being filled with wine and leads to debauchery, whereas filled with the Holy Spirit, you will do the right things. Now let's look at what happens when a person is being filled with the Holy Spirit. In verses 18 to 21, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here two expressions are mentioned, speaking to each other and singing. We can praise God by using psalms and speak to each other besides singing. Now some of us grew up with the culture of where we are more subdued in expressing our emotions. So being overly expressive in front of others makes us feel very uncomfortable. I'm like that. So for us, we need to learn to express our emotions and freely praise and um, proclaim Him. I observed that in the sunset service during worship singing, there are some people who do not like to sing. They just stood there and watch. And I think for once a while it is alright. But if you keep doing this, then you ought to consider are you here to praise God with song and worship Him? You are here to worship Him and not to be an audience. Singing and praises, singing and praising the Lord is not something that is optional. Over the years, the sunset congregation has improved in singing and expressing praises to God. But this can be still be further improved, especially when we sing the doxology. If we were to worship God, worship the triune God, the mighty creator of the universe, then we would not be singing the doxology as we do now. Now let's look at the second point. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Reverence includes respect and fear. We rever Christ because He is of the highest authority. We fear Christ because He is our ultimate judge. The church today is being influenced by the postmodernistic beliefs in that Christians sometimes form their own views on the biblical teaching, and that resulted in people trying to personalize their faith, and that can be a problem sometimes. For example, how is reverence being expressed? Brothers and sisters from different denominations, different cultural backgrounds, and different age groups will, defend, will define reverence differently. Some will think that we have to be very serious when we come to worship God on Sunday. So to rever God, we have to dress nicely, no shorts, no sandals. But other people will think that we worship God in spirit and truth. So what is important is my attitude, is inside, not the external. So it doesn't matter what we wear. So who is right, who is wrong? It is an arguable matter 
because the Bible doesn't explicitly prescribe dress code. And in such a situation, we need to consider a few factors and submit to one another is one important principle. Let me explain what is the meaning of submitting to one another. It means it is mutual and relative, not absolute. Those who have acted against God, truth, and are in the wrong are to submit to what? those who abide by the truth and accept being corrected, regardless of their social status inside or outside the church. Submitting to one another also indicates that all of us have weaknesses and need to be reminded by others to submit to one another. And we have the responsibility to admonish one another and keep one another accountable. So how can we submit to one another? We submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Our reverence for Christ is what helps us to submit to one another. And this is an outward expression of our reverence for Christ and is the most difficult spiritual exercise. And submit, submission to the Lord also includes submitting to those whom the Lord wants us to submit to. So come back to the dressing, dress code as an expression of reverence. There are two factors to consider, church culture and church tradition. And next is the principle of submitting to one another. I once heard a pastor who shared about his experience pastoring a conservative church. He wanted to make some changes to the worship and one day he found that his mem one of his members owns a musical shop. So he bought some instrument from him and started the worship team with different musical instruments. Another time he bought a pair of seeds, a simple, and he wanted to use it. But the members told him, Pastors, let's don't start using this first. Let's display it on the stage because the people are not used to a simple. So this pastor's listened and wait, waited patiently and he waited for one year before the pair of symbol was used and the fact that this pastor's willing to wait demonstrate his wisdom as also his willingness to submit to one another he knows that church culture or church tradition doesn't change over a short period of time and furthermore this is not pertaining to truth so it is okay to wait. We struggle to submit to the Lord and even more so to people. We struggle to submit to people because we cannot accept the, that God exercises authority through men. But actually, externally we submit to people, but we are actually submitting to God. Submitting to those whom God wants us to submit to is a true test of our submission to Him and is truly live under the authority of Christ if we are able to submit to man. And if we can submit to one another, we can then live harmoniously with one another. The friction between brothers and sisters will be minimized. Let me come back to the point of putting off and putting on that I mentioned at the beginning of the sharing. Apostle Paul tells the believers of Ephesians that you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off yourself. Paul seems to be a bit blunt here. He's, he told them, you have heard, you have learned, and you have accepted. So now change, put off your old clothes and put on your new clothes. Old thoughts and behaviors are not easy to get rid of because they involve changing our views and attitudes on things. That's why Paul in Ephesians 4.18 says, They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Ignorance and hardening of hearts. A psychology ever said this, 
One of the reasons why mankind make mistakes is because we are ignorant. We are ignorant, yet we think we know everything. Dear brothers and sisters, Apostles Paul's lesson for us today is not so much of stop stealing, stop being lazy, or getting drunk, but it's more of being filled with the Holy Spirit to sing the Lord, to sing to the Lord out of our hearts, to thank God for everything, and to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So are we to continue wearing our prisoner's clothes? Let us put off our old self and put on our new self so that our church will grow in Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you open our eyes and change our heart so that we see our weaknesses and be willing to change, to put off, to put off our old self and put on our new self. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love for us, that our Lord Jesus come to die for us, that we may become children of God. Lord, there are lots of things that we learn, and we know they are good. But Lord, there are times where we are weak. We dare not to change, as we should. So we ask that God, you give us that strength to change into a new man, a new person in you, Lord, so that we continue to glorify your name with not just our words, but with our lives. We thank you, Lord. When we come before you, we also want to offer a small amount of what we have already received back to you, Lord. And we pray to God, you put them to good use for the extension of your kingdom. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the second Sunday of every May, we celebrate Mother's Day, for they have contributed a lot to the family. And thus, we want to wish every mother a happy Mother's Day today. May God richly bless all of you. Very soon, we're going to finish our study of the book of Ephesians. And thereafter, we're going to continue with the study of Genesis from chapter 12 right through to chapter 50. We're going to cover that in 12 sessions. And therefore, we ask all of you to kindly read this in advance. It will enhance you in your Bible study. Hopefully, you may complete the entire reading by the end of May. Thank you. On the 14th of June, we shall have praise and worship. And this time our theme is, at all times, we praise God. We ask that anyone who wish to contribute in this praise and worship to send your video of testimony or a video of songs on praise to me. And we will compile that for we think by June, we may most probably still have our worship online. Thank you. In light of the praise and worship, uh, we are also thinking of having a virtual choir. In terms of the praise and worship, we are also thinking of having a virtual choir. That is, we record all of us singing at home, put them together as a choir. I'm not too sure we can be successful, but we want to try. Those who are interested, please contact me. I'll let you know how we can go about doing this. Thank you. Yes, we mentioned about this. Due to the present situations, the workers stay in the hostels have to be re located so that they have got more space to observe the social distancing. And because of that, they are unable to cook. And so two Christian organizations are preparing food for them. If you want to contribute to this, simply do send the money to us through the same method, the pay now method. At the remarks, remember to state COVID. And we will know that this money is meant for this uh, ministry. Thank you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you from now till ever after. Amen.